Welcome back, Degenerates. Apparently, I missed a few last time, so I thought I'd do a part two. So this is Ruining Classic Movies, part 29, the Sandler edition, part two. That's a lot of fucking parts. We're gonna start with the longest fucking Popeyes commercial ever made. Wonder how much Popeyes actually paid them for that fucking product placement. Legend has it they actually saved money on production by saying fuck New York and filming Florida on a day-to-day -day basis. No joke, that's really how we live. As completely unrealistic as this movie is, it was actually pretty fucking good. I mean, come on, man. Chubbs was in it. And so was Ozzy. But I love how the Prince of Darkness was the angel's weapon. Shit, that means only Ozzy can defeat true evil. Are we not going to talk about the fact that he fucks up the entire movie at releasing the evil but becomes a Jedi when it's time to release the good? I really don't even have to say much. If Henry Roth can justify this relationship in his mind, he's a fucking psychopath. Think about it. That man is taking advantage of a woman with a serious brain injury. I mean, then again, so is Jill Biden and Congress. I do have to say, though, I really fucking like the call out to Tommy Boy in this movie. Most people usually miss it. But this movie also gave me the title to my autobiography. Shocks, they only bite when you touch the private pots. Welcome to the most unnecessary matchup in human history. Never have I been watching a movie and said to myself, you know what this movie needs? More spade. I seriously think they made this movie just so that Adam Sandler could pretend he was married to Salma Hayek. Because, I mean, come on. Who doesn't want Salma Hayek yelling at him in Spanish? I'm also going to say fuck this movie for showing me a water park that awesome that I'll never get to go to. Also, what an unyielding waste of Steve Buscemi. It's actually kind of funny that Steve Buscemi was the best actor in the movie. Well, we didn't need this fucking remake, did we? This movie was born when Adam Sandler sat and thought to himself, how many pro wrestlers can I get into one film? And was it just me or did Stone Cold Steve Austin seem a little too natural dropping that hard R? My favorite character in this whole movie has to be Swatowski. I'm sorry, I broke it in your toy. I'm pretty sure they gave Bob Sapp the outtake dialogue from the water boy for his role. Like Adam Sandler opened up an alternate universe where Bobby Boucher was a big black dude. Daddy! I thought that Adam Sandler got all of his 80s nostalgia out of his system with the wedding singer. But I was wrong. Let's count down the countless ways this movie was fucking weird. Let's start off by saying this is a horror movie, not a comedy. I mean, come on, Kevin James is the president. Honestly, that may be better than the current administration and the previous administration, so I digress. Let's also talk about the fact they were able to weaponize alien technology in a matter of a couple of days. Sounds like the release of the COVID vaccine. Yeah, completely unbelievable on both. But this movie is a very historic film because it marks one of the only times Sean Bean has ever made it through a film. Like seriously, Sean Bean had several chances to become a t-shirt, but he made it through. So good on Sean. I can already see the comments now. You missed so many more. Well, maybe I'll do a part three. So as usual, life on part 30.